Here's another mechanism for this suicide of Diocles. Um, let me bring that figure there. This one apparently was um, suggested by Isaac Newton. Um, and we'll model it with uh, GX Web. So um, in this model, again, we have a subsidiary vertical line. And I uh, can specify both its verticality and its position by giving a distance from the y-axis. So that make it both parallel and distance A from the y-axis. Um, now we have a separate um, yeah, point which we can put um, near the origin. And what we have is a slider that goes through A. So this length, the length from A to B is not going to be specified. But the length from B to C is going to be specified, and that is going to be the length A. But we want to keep this angle, as we turn this, as we move this up and down, it's kind of working OK, except this um, has to, this angle needs to be kept um, at 90 degrees. So let's try and constrain that. Now, this is what we'd like to do, is use this 90 degree constraint, but it's not uh, available to us. The problem is that, that um, uh, putting the 90 degrees in there is going to make it not constructible for GX Web. So we have to get a little bit creative. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to specify this length. This is actually going to be the parameter um, of, our, of our mechanism. So I'm going to specify that length is T. And then instead of putting, I still won't have my 90 degrees available to me, as you see. Um, but instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the length from A to C. Um, we'll find that that is available to me. And in order to make this a right angle, this needs, by Pythagoras theorem, this needs to be the square root of T squared. Um, plus a squared. Uh, now, so with that in place, we can get the appropriate motion. T is moving and uh, C is the, doing the appropriate sliding. And um, the point that we'd like to drag, draw our mechanism is um, the midpoint here. And we can uh, now uh, create uh, a curve um, with the uh, the locus of D as T varies. Uh, there we see the curve there. Um, we can get T is very, the, the system has created its own bounds for T, but let's start it at zero. Um, now we can see that as T goes to zero, the, the mechanism is going to collapse. We can't we can't push this mechanism through to give us the other half of the curve. Um, what we can do though is uh, artificially create the other half of the curve just by reflecting this one bit of the curve in the x-axis. Um, and so there, uh, there is the complete curve. Um, Let's see what the uh, equation of that is. And we can see, as we've seen before with these curves, we can see there's a, an x cubed, an xy squared, an x squared, a y squared with the same uh, uh, coefficient, and then an x and a constant. So this is the same curve that we've been seeing, uh, this is sort of Diocles. Um, what happens if we put a point at some other location on the line, not the midpoint? So let's, let's do that. We'll put 
point f sorry let me do that i'm going to put it at a specified location s that's that's a um a parametric location along uh, the, the proportional uh, proportion s along um along that line uh, if i free it up uh, we can uh, we can drag it um let's have a look at the locus of that as t varies um, we can see that we get perhaps a loop down here and a flatter curve down here we can reflect that so we get the whole curve see how that varies for different locations along along the line and we can take a look at this equation um, now we see a similar equation with a bit more a bit more freedom uh, in our parameters <clears throat> 